All right. And I wanted to bring up, I want to introduce you to our guest host off the lobby. Many of you have seen him on uh, many of our other webinars. We have a webinar series that we've been doing with Afu Lobby that has been very eye-opening and has been very um, appreciated by a lot of sellers. A lot of things that have opened my eyes personally about the way that I've been doing things wrong. <laughs> and um, so this says uh, one in that series. It's a webinar called how to decrease fees across your entire supply chain and one of the things that um, I was talking about with Afu Lobby and I think he's going to touch on this a little bit one of the things that I was talking to Afu Lobby about was about how a lot of this has to do with um, the valuation when you sell so if you're looking to in one day sell your company then doing these things early on makes a lot of sense it will carry through it will not only improve your profitability now but will also carry through in your financials and will also um, increase that profit margin so that when you do go to sell your company is a lot more valuable and you know really is based on you know sales that you're currently doing now not necessarily even increasing your sales but just lowering your cost of goods and lowering the costs within your supply chain will increase your valuation. It could increase your valuation exponentially. So if you save $50,000 a year and you're getting a 3X multiple valuation, that's like putting $150,000 into your pocket plus saving or saving that $50,000 a year. So uh, we are talking about a lot of money here and that's why I love talking to Afalabi, having him on he has educated us a lot in terms of inventory management. I mean, in terms of inventory sourcing, in terms of uh, supply chain. And uh, we met him through my friend, Norm Farrar. And he said, Afu Lobby is doing things with sourcing and logistics that I've never seen before. Afu Lobby has been doing this for 20 years. And we're learning so much more about how we should be running our business. And we are directly now working with Afu Lobby to completely clean up our supply chain uh, to make sure that we're getting the right pricing, that we're getting the right pricing on our sourcing and our, and our shipping. And we're also looking at reconfiguring the way that we're warehousing our inventory because I personally know that we're spending way too much on warehousing. So without further ado, hopefully he, um, is able to share his video. Um, let me just double check. Yes, there we go. Okay, great. Um, without further ado, I'm going to bring on the man himself. Welcome, Afu Lobby, to the call. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, Hi, Kelsey. And it's been a we we uh, staggered the schedule a little bit, so it's been a little while. Uh, a, you know, a few more weeks uh, beyond what we normally do. So it's good to see your face again. Thank you, thank you, thanks, everyone. Um, I like what you were saying about um, when you want to sell your business. Um, I think there's another side of it. If somebody wants to buy an existing business, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, these are the things you really need to look into because a lot of brands or a lot of companies that want to buy another Amazon brand, they come to me and say, well, take a look at this product and see if you can help us save money. So they send me the cost of goods because amazingly, by the time I look at the products and I look at the, the whole supply chain, mm. these buyers can actually find 10 to 20% of the cost of acquisition right in that business. So let's say you're selling a business for, a, a, for $1 million, right? Uh, the buyers will come to someone like me and say, take a look at all these product costs. Take a look at all this shipping costs. And I'm able to find sometimes $100,000 to $200,000 in savings just by looking at the way things are. So they'll be like, okay, so that means this store is actually financing itself. <laughs> So in that way, they have already they have they already have ten percent at least uh, that they're going to make right off the moment they close on that deal. They're making money from day one. They're making money way more than you from day one. So if you're willing to buy another business, because I see uh, I see I have friends and 
uh, clients that are buying other Amazon brands. Uh, so it's something also you should look into, uh, you know, when you're vetting the business that you're about to buy. Just look at all the loopholes, look at all the things we're going to talk about today. It will help you to make a better, solid offer for this business because they don't know what you know. Yeah. Right? You so, know, <laughs> Interestingly, another, another way to look at, at this information that I was just thinking of, uh, think of the products that I have liquidated over the years because the profit margin has gone down and become unprofitable. And it wasn't that the product wasn't selling. It was more so that the pricing changed on Amazon and it no longer made sense to put money into that versus into something else. But if we were able to source the product, you know, so if you're thinking of liquidating a product because the profit margin has gone down, it might make sense to do something like, you know, you, you have something called the, the price checker, you know, we pay a little bit of money to get a price check to see if there's actual more, actually more profitability there. Um, and then you could go ahead and then source the product and find that the product that is selling but not making you money is actually something that could become profitable again. You've done all that work to you know, get the product ranked, it's selling, uh, and it's just a matter of profitability. It's something that it really makes sense to look at, you know, the entire supply chain of that product to see if that actually could be a winner, a winning product. Exactly. And some sellers, uh, they look at their competitors and like, how in the world is my competitor able to sell at this low cost? Yeah. What are they doing <laughs> that I'm not doing? So, uh, you know, that's where repricing comes. You can you know, go reprice your product, find another supplier and compare the price. And uh, you'll be able to save as well. And you'll be able to have a competitive edge over your competitors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you want us to take it away? Go uh, for it. All right. Let me share my screen and then we can start. Mm -hmm. You need to enable my screen share, Chelsea, so I can yes, um, share my screen. I have to make you a co-host. I don't know why it doesn't automatically make you a co-host. Let me know if that works. Yes, this works. Awesome. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yep. So you see the opening page, right? Yes. Awesome, awesome. All right, everyone, let's get into this real quick uh, so that we can, at the very end, I want us to have a lot of time to do question and answers because uh, a lot of people have a different uh, scenario or they have a different issue going on. So I, I would like to answer questions at the very end of this. So how to decrease fees across your entire supply chain? Uh, many people already know about me. I'm going to run down through about myself so that we can get to uh, what we really want to do this uh, today. Uh, I love finding things. I'm just, I'm passionate about it. I, I enjoy saving. You should see how happy I am when I'm able to get a better deal uh, for any product. It just, just makes me feel better. Um, I love negotiating prices. I, you know, I, I just like finding good quality products at the Bergen. Um, and I use different negotiating tactics. If you watch our past videos, so please, this is a series. You can go watch the past videos. You'll see how I talk about some of my negotiation skills and strategies that, that I use to bring prices down. Uh, you know, uh, so I co-founded Onu with Norman, you know, the big bearded guy, very super nice guy. Uh, I really enjoy working with him. Um, and also, I really want to thank Chelsea to, for bringing me here uh, again. I really enjoy uh, coming here to talk. So I, I currently helped a lot of uh, brands to buy and sell on and off Amazon. I helped them invent products and develop the invention, you know, sourced and manufactured a lot of products. We bring in tons and tons of products every month. Uh, and of course, I've made mistakes like you. So anything we're about to say here today, anything I'm about to show you, uh, I mean, don't beat yourself up, you know, don't beat yourself over it because, you know, 
took me a while to learn it as well, and I'm still learning every day. Okay, so uh, let's just have a great time, you know, enjoy the whole uh, learning, and we we'll always be learning. So these are some of Onu's uh, solutions. We do product sourcing and repricing. We do tariff body, which is now going to be called tariff terminator. Uh, we're going to be doing, we do warehousing of fulfillment, you know, you know, freight cost negotiations. We help you find, you know, we call it the profit finder now. Uh, the soft price checker helps you to check the price. You know, let's say you find a price on any of those, any sourcing website, we can just send us the link. We'll help you find a better price. And uh, we do the Chinese trademarks. We help you do inspections, not inspections, not all inspections are the same. They're very different from one another, okay? All right, enough about me, let's go. Let's go. Uh, the goal, as Chelsea was, was saying from the very beginning, the goal of this is to help you cut cost, increase your profit, and double the value of your business by making simple changes to your supply chain. Just simple, you'll see that, I'm gonna go over 15 points today, and they're very, very simple. Uh, uh, I know people rarely do them, but if you apply them to your business, you will see immediate, instantly, you'll see your income go up really, really fast, okay? I like to keep it simple. Um, just by taking these simple steps, you'll be able to make money when you buy, not just when you sell. You know, people ask me, what does that mean? Well, many... You know, if you're selling on Amazon or wherever you're selling, everybody's trying to, you know, play buy box game and everything. But I just feel that you should be able to make money when buying. Like you, you should be able to save so much money that it wouldn't hurt you even if your products sit a little bit before they're selling uh, because you're going to make your money back because of the kind of uh, savings you're having from the very beginning. And we should be able to, you know, two to three X the value of your business. It's possible, I've seen it before. Uh, you'll be able to supercharge your profits. You know, it's good to, I mean, Chelsea was saying something at the beginning about, you know, if you're able to save $50,000, you know, just by rearranging things, at the end of the year, that's your money to keep. You could do whatever with that money. And it doesn't cost you all the time in the world to do just simple steps you take and it gets you there. So we've heard a lot of supply chain, supply chain management, supply these, you know. What does it even mean? You know, what does the supply chain mean? It's simply the process of sourcing, manufacturing, and moving your products from, one sup from your suppliers to your customers in an efficient and cost-effective way. You know, if you wanna go to Florida, you may walk, you may fly, you may drive, you'll get there eventually. But you know, in some cases, you might get there in like two months. In another case, you might get there, you know, in two hours. And uh, another case, you might get there in 17 hours. If you live close to where I am, I think it's 17 hours to Florida. So how do we manufacture our goods? and save move our goods faster and save you know you don't have to pay more why do you have to pay more if you could do it better right so that's what we're going to be doing uh there are five main costs uh in you know that can make or break your business especially if you're selling online but your cost of goods the cost of transporting your goods the cost of storage cost of shipping to your customers and the cost of importation, which is your duty. If we can take care of these five main costs, you are going to make a lot of money. Uh, you're going to save, you're going to make a lot of profit. You'll be better prepared to compete with anybody else, okay? So let's go through our 15 main points. I like this bag of money. I like to use images. <laughs> How to decrease fees across your entire supply chain. Number one, consolidate your shipments. I was talking to somebody recently and, uh, you know, she was about to book two shipping. 
And I, so I was looking at her invoice. I'm like, why are they quoting you two shipments? She's like, you know, what's wrong with that? I said, well, let me look at your suppliers. Let me see where they're coming from. So I look at the, the addresses of our suppliers. I'm like, they're very close to each other. I said, okay, when is, when is the shipment A and shipment B going to be ready? She's like, they're a week apart. I said, why don't we ship it together? She's like, can you do that? I said, yeah. You know, so we were <laughs> instantly able to trim off at least $1,000 just in, sh in shipping by consolidating from one factory to the other, bring it together into a one central location and ship them out. You are gonna say it's amazing how much money you can pick up by just doing that one simple thing. Okay, so before you ship anything, make sure you explore the possibility of just consolidating everything together and ship out. You will save money, you will save a lot of money. Number two, Reduce storage costs by storing your goods in a China warehouse. Well, I give a cost comparison. You store your goods at a China warehouse, it's $10 a pallet. You store it in California warehouse, it's 20 to $30 a pallet. You store it on the East Coast, it's 12 to $15 a pallet. If you can swing it, if you know that your products are not being needed on US soil now, then it's better to keep it in China. Your first thing is to keep it with your supplier. If your supplier kicks you out and says, I don't want to store your goods for free, then move it to a China warehouse. If that's not the case, then you can move it to the less cheaper warehouse, whichever way, but the way you move it, uh, you will be able to pick up a lot of savings. This would have saved us so much money. I, I saw, I was looking through the slides. I was like, oh my gosh, we've, we've wasted so much money and so I'm so glad you're, you're working on changing our warehouses, reconfiguring our warehouses. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't wait to see how much money we're going to save because oh, yeah. it's spot on. We're in California. We're paying $23 per pallet and we have spent a lot of money. Um, and the thing that I like a lot is that you have the ability to kind of look at the thing and say, okay, you'll keep a little bit in the, in a California warehouse or in an East coast warehouse, but keep the bulk of it in China and then you can just send those over, you know, when you need them and kind of, you know, have a, a hybrid solution when it exactly. makes sense. Right. Exactly. Look, that's what Amazon is doing. When Amazon does an FC transfer, that's what they're doing. They're moving their goods based on the cost of storage on the, in their warehouses. So Amazon, you know, you know they, they push some products on the, to the East Coast, they push some product to the middle, they push some product to the West Coast. They're factoring two things. They're factoring where would the customer come from? And they're factoring, well, how, how much are we paying renting all these warehouse spaces in this location? So they're doing the same thing. You might as well play the same game. <laughs> <laughs> you just play the same thing they're doing. You also put your goods, you know, to where you can, you pay the least and uh, you will be fine. Number three, time your production right. You know, are you making multiple products in China? Why not have them all manufactured around the same time so you can ship them all together? It's key because if you have... Two CBM, which is CBM means uh, a cubic meter. If you have three pallets of a product, uh, you know, product A, and you're going to have, you know, one pallet of product B, and the minimum, uh, 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 the minimum tier for you to get a big break in your shipping is two or three pallets and above. Why don't you make all these products around the same time so that you can put the pallets together and get some really, really good savings on your shipping. Uh, I remember I told you it's gonna be simple stuff, but it's amazing that most of us don't do it, but you, you don't have excuse now, you have to start doing this. So time your production very right and uh, you will save a lot. Number four, 
make your products in as few factories as possible. I, I, I have some brands that I make like 40, 50 of their products from the same factory. It helps me to negotiate better pricing and it's so easy for me to move their goods to the US or to any FBA warehouse because it's made under the same place, right? And inspection is also good. You're saving a lot on inspection because inspection is really charged per man day. So if an inspector is gonna go inspect your product for one day and you have 500 pieces of product A and 500 pieces of product B, then you can lump them together and save. I just got a, about a week or two ago, I just got a, someone sent me an invoice for inspection. I think it's from a sourcing agent and they're charging him two inspection cost. And I looked very closely. I saw that these products are being made from the same factory. They are very little. They're like a hundred, uh, they're like 500 units each and they're charging him two inspection. It should be one because the products are ready at the same time. They're being made from the same factory. Why do you have to pay two inspection costs for them, right? So those are some of the benefits of making your products in as few factories as possible. You will save on inspection and domestic transportation as well. If they're going to pick up your product, instead of going to three, two, three different factories, they can go to only one and pick up your products from there. Yeah, that's very interesting. So he was getting double charged for the yes. same amount of work because he didn't know exactly to, to ask them. And that's why it's very under, important to understand processes, you know, throughout lead time, understand, uh, you know, lead throughout your entire supply chain. If you understand the processes that go into making and, and shipping the products, you can more easily understand when you're being hoodwinked, really. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's true. Yeah, because the inspection is a man day. It's mm -hmm. for one person yeah. to spend a whole day to go do your inspection. So if you have 500 of one, 200 of the other, 300 of the other, then you can do everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So you're paying him for his time. You're not paying for the Exactly. The product. Exactly. 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 Yep. Number five, avoid shipping out of China in January. I mean, everybody should know this. January is the worst month to ship out of China. Everyone is getting ready to go on Chinese New Year holidays and they want to, that's when shipping is so high. Uh, so I would say just try to ship by December 15 because November and December are almost, uh, they're the slowest months in the shipping industry. So that's where you're going to get all your, you know, you know, lowest prices because the holiday shipping has been done by December. Even by November, all the holiday shippings have been done. So the trucks are just running empty all over the country in those two months. You know, my trucker tells me all the time that, you know, you know, December, November, December is their worst month because they don't have anything to pick up. That's why the, the price is a lot cheaper in those two months. January, China is about to shut down for Chinese New Year. Everybody's rushing to ship out their product. Of course, the shipping cost will be high. Okay. Number six, ship to FBA in bulk. Truckload of pallet is really way better. Let me give you a scenario. If I ship a truckload of 50 pallets from my facility here, to an Amazon warehouse, it comes down to about 450 to five, about 450 to 500 dollars for the whole truck, carrying 50 pallets. That is 10 bucks a pallet. But if you ship by UPS, you ship the amount of the same amount of volume by UPS or FedEx, you're gonna be paying about $9,000. See the difference? Wow. 500, 450 to 
is it possible you talk about consolidating and then and then you know truckloads or pallets versus you know loose uh, cartons here? Is it possible to consolidate your shipping your um, your shipments so that you can send a truckload yes. combined with other sellers? Is yes. that possible? Yes. Mm, there yes. you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where well, the series starts to get up and uh, get up there. Mm -hmm. So you should be working with someone like you, like your logistics pr uh, provider should be trying to coordinate across their client base to mm -hmm. arrange shipments and say, okay, we've got a shipment happening, you know, on Thursday of this week, we've got a shipment happening, you know, mm -hmm. next Thursday. And like, so you know that you can get into one of those shipments and lower your cost. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. It's a significant savings. Wow. It's almost unbelievable. It's yeah. significant. <laughs> yeah. So these are all the things that uh, we really need, need to put in place. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen over $2,000 in savings from just one shipping. Right. So you need to have really a proactive warehousing mm -hmm. uh, yes. operation. Yes. Especially, uh, and you have to tweak it. I mean, you have to put it in right from the very beginning. Like, uh, like the work orders that they create from SoStar, uh -huh. you have to bring in, I mean, you have to create that so that the warehouse knows exactly, the warehouse can put you in the queue, in the, in the, uh, in the line to ship out with a truckload. Mm -hmm. Wow. That would be actually very interesting. If, if, a one, if a warehouse, then we build out an interface so that a, where, that a warehouse has multiple clients in SoStar, they get a report of like, you know, a queue of all of their clients within so stock who need a shipment. We could help to facilitate. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it would be a really, really, that's a million dollar feature. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. It, will okay. save, it will save people a lot of money. Yeah. Yep. I'm taking notes. Yeah. Number seven sell in bundles or packs. So uh, I see this happen a lot when you can go to your uh, Amazon, uh, your seller center uh, average order. I think that's how they, what they call it. If you see 10%, 20%, 30% of your order is two or three pieces from the same buyer, then that means every time Amazon picks each unit, they charge you a dollar to three dollars to pick each of the units. Now, well, how about when you're manufacturing the next time, make 10 to 15 percent of your production multi packs? If you do that, you're going to save on the pick and pack fee on Amazon. So whoever wants to buy multi-pack will buy multi-pack and uh, it costs maybe less than 25 cents to bundle from China. Or you want to have, even if you have your 3PL warehouse do the bundling here in the U.S., it's still, you know, about 25 cents or less. And you're going to be saving a lot because every time Amazon touches your goods, they charge you a separate pick and pack fee for that extra item that your customer just bought. Even though it's in the same, they're shipping it in the same box, but they're charging you for the peak fee. So these are all the little, little things that you really have to take into consideration and it will save you a lot of money, a lot of money. So look into your seller center, look at how many people are buying multiple packs or multiple pieces of your product. If it is significant, like 10% and above, consider doing another variant or another variation of your product that would include a two-pack or a three-pack. It's very seen, interesting. Mm -hmm. Some people are, are doing virtual bundles. So they've already got the bundle set up in Amazon, but they're, they're doing a virtual bundle where they create a fulfillment order and they're still making, you know, so they've already got the bundle set up on the Amazon side, but because they're not packing it together, they're actually paying the money. So it's kind of like, you know, the worst of both sides. They've got, they've got people already going to a bundle listing and ordering on a bundle listing or a multi-pack listing and they're still paying. Yep. Yep. Wow. It's better to bundle straight 
and create a bundle from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. That way, when they pick your bundle, they charge you only one pick fee. Yeah, that's really smart. Instead of, instead of multiple pick fees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number eight, store your products at a 3PL warehouse closest to your final FBA destination. This is a no-brainer. The closer your storage is to your usual Amazon FBA warehouse, the cheaper your shipping cost. So you store your goods on East Coast. If Amazon usually tells you to send your products to the East Coast facility, store it on the West Coast if they always tell you to ship to the West Coast FDA facility, you know, because that you're going to save. Can you imagine shipping from the New York warehouse, shipping a truck to, from the New York warehouse to, to, to ONT8 in California? It's going to cost you a fortune. Whereas if you store it there, it's better. Or if you're shipping to Carolinas or Ohio warehouse, it's better you store your goods at a 3PL place on the East Coast. Because once we're sh shipping it out for you, you're going to pick up on, on a lot of savings. Okay. Uh, nine, reprice your products. Negotiate with your supplier. Myself and Chelsea, we were talking about this at the very beginning. If you found your supplier on any of those sourcing any of those popular websites, there's a huge chance you'll be able to save up to 20% on your product cost. It's also smart to have backup suppliers so you can compare and save, right? So if you go to a sourcing website and you buy, and that's where you found your supplier, of course your supplier knows you're a foreigner and you're probably getting a foreign, a foreigner, foreign price. Um, the, the way to go about that is to uh, either find a sourcing agent or uh, somebody that really knows what they're doing to help you go find a backup supplier. We do this a lot at Onu, where somebody will come up, come with their prices and say, look, this is how much I'm getting now. Could you do better? And we'll take a look at the product. We'll be like, yeah, we should be able to do better than this. And, you know, we, you know sometimes we pick up 10%, sometimes we pick up 15%. Uh, even even increase the value. I mean, increase the quality of the product. In many cases, we we can even tell you we'll find you a better quality even at a cheaper price. So if you want to increase your quality, uh, it's also a thing to increase quality without paying more. If people are complaining about your product, you're having a, a bad reviews or whatever, that might be another, that might be. Uh, the time to switch suppliers and go find a supplier that is better suited uh, to make you the kind of quality you want. So repricing, even if you save 5%, if you're doing $200,000 a year in sales and you save 5%, 5% of your cost of goods, if your cost of goods is, you know, 60 grand, you save 5%, that's $3,000 right there. That's the money you didn't have before that is coming into your pocket. You can use it to do whatever you want, you know, and it doesn't cost much to reprice products, okay? So that's one of the major, major areas that you're going to fine tune uh, your supply chain. Uh, it's actually one of the biggest ones. Uh, number 10 is avoid last minute shipping via hair cargo as much as you can. Right now, hair cargo is about 10 to 12 dollars a kilo it used to be four or five now it's 10 to 12 so it's almost like almost triple the price so if you can plan ahead of time uh chelsea there's a way there's a place in so stock you can pick whether you can you can you can do like a a timeline uh whereby you uh, a lead time of hair cargo and a lead time of high speed boat or lead time of ocean, right? Yes, yeah, we have a default lead time and then there's an express lead time. So you can add, you, you can switch the uh, express lead, um, lead time to see, you know, if air cargo, if you set up, you know, specific lead times for this, you can set up uh, an ocean, you know, a high speed ocean lead time. That's what we've, we have recently set up, uh, an air lead time so you can see you know, will I be able to, if I'm risking a stock out and I need to do express, will I be able to, to make it work with a uh, high speed ocean mm -hmm. or do I have to do an air and how much inventory do I have to send just to avoid running out of stock 
rather than, you know, sending everything, it'll, you know, calculate for you how much inventory do you actually have to spend or do you have, have to send to avoid the stock out, but not so much inventory that you're paying extra money for stuff that won't be sold through before your ocean gets there. Exactly. I mean, I wish I had access to uh, your software two years ago. <laughs> um, I had a brand that was losing $40,000 every year. Wow. In just in shipping cost. Mm -hmm. And it comes out of planning. It's yeah. the planning problem. Not really, you know, because there was no triggers. There was nothing. Every, everything is being done by spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. so, and, and by the time they catch the spikes or they catch it, it's too late. You have to, you know, ship it by hair cargo or, you know, I mean, I calculated the cost. It was over 40 grand. Wow. Are yeah. As an, as an entrepreneur, you're doing so many other things. Your eyes aren't always 100% on your inventory levels. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and especially when you add the, the additional, I call it a crutch. It's a, it's a benefit and a curse to have an external warehouse because you go, okay, well, we put 9,000 units in there. 9,000 units is sitting there. And so we're good on inventory. But then you don't realize that, you know, six months has gone by since you put 9,000 units there mm -hmm. you've been pulling from it and pulling you from it and pulling from it. And suddenly you, you know, you've, you've been so relying on, Oh, we are good. We have inventory. And then you realize you should have placed an order two weeks ago. Uh, and that's how a warehouse can be a curse is that, you know, you don't realize when you're supposed to place the order because you feel comfortable enough having that extra inventory. So, you know, all of these little things became factors that, we're starting to clobber our business, which is why we built so stocked because you know, you're doing so many other things. You need something to alert you when you need to place those orders because you're in the marketing and you're, you know, going to events and you're doing all of these other things that inventory isn't always 100% on the top of your mind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to have tools. Exactly. Exactly. It's perfect. Perfect. So all these things, they matter and they put money. It's when, when we don't do it, we're losing money. We just don't realize it. These are money that you're, you know, it's almost like flushing down the toilet because of, you know, just these little things that slip through our, uh, our fingers just because we don't, you know, pay attention on it. All right. The next one is so funny. Shrink wrap. Don't poly bag. <laughs> I've seen this happen several times. I see people put, you know, uh, you know, I see packaging and I'm like, wow. And the product cost is the retail price is 20 bucks and the fulfillment cost is 11 bucks. And I'm like, and people complain like, I, I, I'm not making any money with this thing. I'm saying, let me look at your product. Let me see your packaging. Let me see why you're not making money on this. And by the time you see what they do, you know why they don't make it any money. So let's take, let's take a look at this real quick. That's, that's interesting. I have a friend and they are just constantly getting their product resized. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if it's because of the poly bag. Because, you know, they've had to battle so many times. They lost tens of thousands of dollars on oversized fees that yep. weren't reverted they they went to battle with amazon and they just you know they couldn't get it reverted some of them sometimes they would get it reverted but there was one occasion where they just couldn't get them to budge on it um so if you are facing problems of consistently having your your items be put into the oversized category it might be this wow yep. interesting yeah yep. you know watch this one so these are the kinds of products uh, these are not my products or any of the uh, thing, but take a look at all this packaging. You know, uh, which one, which ones are the money suckers? You know, can somebody tell us which ones are the money suckers in all this packaging right here? Well, definitely that basket one. The basket one, yeah. <laughs> You guys can type into the chat. Too. You can type into the chat. Which ones are the money suckers here? Is it this host right here? Okay, someone is typing. Let me see. Oh, yeah. The basket. Yes, Ahmed. It's the basket one. Which ones? I, I see a lot of money suckers here. Which are the ones? Somebody want to type into this? 
Anybody wants to get a, take a guess? All these products are money suckers except one. The bottom right one looks like it was doing a pretty good job. The bottom right one, like uh, the mat, like a road mat or something. Yeah. Well, let's see. Oh, except for it's got stuff sticking at the top. Huh. Hmm. Uh, let's see. That's the winner. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best packaging because other ones are like in a poly bag. They're sticking out. You know how Amazon... Okay, another thing I recommend is uh, if you're living close to an Amazon warehouse that take public, that like allow public to come in, mm -hmm. you should go for that tour. Mm. Please, if you have an Amazon warehouse, FBA warehouse next to me, close to where you are, I, it's well worth the, the effort to go take a tour. You see how they measure your goods. It's insane. So they're gonna they're gonna stretch it and stretch it and put a you know the what do you call it the tape measure and make sure they stretch it very well. So if you're using a poly bag and your poly bag, even if it's a fraction, a fraction of an inch goes past that you know 17 whatever 17 inches mark, you're in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, they they would. It's a difference of four dollars to eleven dollars in some cases. I've seen brands losing six bucks, seven bucks in FBA fees just because the packaging is all you know all over the bag and these and everything you know. So uh, take a. Uh, 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 you know, make sure please go for uh, go for a tour on an Amazon. What is cubic cubic span, Victor? What is a cubic span? Is that what Amazon uses? I was just looking it up. I have a link to it. It looks like um automated systems. Oh, it's a machine they use. Like uh -huh. it, 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 it looks like it maybe it's measured. They they'll put it through and it measures it, and so. You've got a computer maybe that, you know, is, is uh, measuring it as well that can't think like a person. So and some people that can't, that think like computers. <laughs> so, Victor, do they stretch, do, you, do they lay your stuff flat? Like if you're using uh, the, the poly bag, do they, do, does this machine lay it flat? You don't know? Yeah, because I get all these things all the time. I get all these people fighting just because when you stretch it out and you use tape to measure, the one I have here in PA, uh, maybe they haven't started using the QB scan yet, but the one I have here, uh, you know, they measure it, you know, and it, they, even, they even take a photo of how they measured it. <laughs> they have somebody actually take a photo of the tape, measure how they measure it, but that's a very good information to know. Uh, I really want to research that QB scan to see if it's going to stretch out a poly bag when measuring it, but that's a really good information. So, you know, our packaging, please make it really, see that you heat shrink it or shrink wrap it. You know, you can heat seal it, heat shrink it, make sure everything is all get, you know, you know, or you suck hair out of it. If you, if you, if you have a product that is squishy or whatever, uh, you might be able to, you know, get the hair out of your product, okay? Uh, another thing is watch out for those high sourcing agent fees. Any fee more than 5% is high. I, I think it's high. I mean, anybody has a, you have a liberty of charging whatever you want, but I just think 5% is fair uh, on the sourcing side. Uh, I've seen, I've, you know, I've seen a, a ton of invoices, uh, you know, sent to me and I, I've seen nine and a half, I've seen nine, I've seen seven and a half, I've seen 11. Uh, percent and uh, the new one I saw last week is the bank fee. This guy was charged two hundred dollars for bank fee uh, from a major, from a major sourcing agent. I, I don't know where they come up with that. Anyway, we yeah, I mean I pay forty dollars for mine, and if you're 
you know, you got to think if, if there's bank fees involved, you know, you just got to pay China. But if you've got a sourcing agent who's collecting money from the U.S. and collecting it from multiple different um, companies, and he's sending it over to his Chinese, you know, his Chinese account, he's got one transfer fee, and then he can pay through the Chinese banking system. He can probably do a free bank to bank transfer. Yep. Um, and pay those suppliers. So he's only taking one fee of probably $40. Yep. Spread out across what, you know, maybe a dozen different, different mm -hmm. clients. So he's, yep. you know, you really should be paying a lot less than that. Yep. I mean, for the $40, you know, transaction or uh, wire fee or whatever, that's, that's normal. Yeah. But this, this invoice I saw last week was 200 bucks. Wow. And it was for bank fee over a ten thousand dollar transaction. Mm. So I'm like, hmm, that's a yeah. little weird. So it, it is when you have things like that, it makes you not really want to trust the the company because it's like, what else is you know, what else is happening that I don't know? Yeah, and they charge they charge nine percent uh, in sourcing agent fee plus a bank fee of about two hundred dollars. So I'm like, eh. yeah, that's weird, but. Uh, I just think it's fair, you know, 5% is okay uh, to charge, if, especially if when they're you saving you 20% or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, I think it's fair, but, you know, they could charge anything you want and you can pay whatever you like, but I just feel 5% is fair. Um, you can certainly sure pay whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. You want to pay if you want to spend your profit on, you know. Yeah, you can pay more. <laughs> You can pay more. Yeah. <laughs> Number 13 is create your FBA shipments like a pro. Now, this one, because I don't know who's going to watch this, I'm very uh, cautious to talk more about this. Uh, because every time you say something and, you know, it looks like Amazon goes in and plugs in the hole and just kind of, you know, all the, like, all the hacks and everything, anytime somebody post it out there and just go in and kind of plug it or whatever. But let me give you a gist of what this is. So I know, or maybe many people know that there are several steps in the seller central when you're creating your shipment. And the first step is to, Amazon will ask you how many pieces in a carton or in a case and how many cases do you have, all right? So let's, let's spend a little time. So let's say you're, you want to send 750 units to your FBA uh, warehouse uh, from China, right? And you want Amazon, you want to force the seller central to let you ship to fewer locations as possible, right? So you divide your 750 by 150. That gives you five cases. Now, even though you're packing in 50 to a case, don't worry about it. We're going to change it at the very end of the shipment creation, okay? So the more cases you have, the more liberty you're giving Amazon to spread it around. So the goal is to give them as less case numbers as possible until you go, until they tell you, until, they, until you get to the phase where they tell you where to ship to. Now, if you put in 50 units per case at the beginning of your shipment creation, they must spread it to three warehouses all over the country. But if you put 150 units per case, they probably will tell you to ship it to one location or two the most. Now, after they tell you where you, they want you to ship it to, there's another space on the bottom while you're creating your shipment. It tells you again to put in your packaging configuration. Now you go back to your real packaging from China, which is 50 in a case, and I have 15 cases or 30 cases or whatever. Because you already went past the stage of the distribution. So that's the gist of it. That's the gist of it. So if you, if you, if you need help with this, you know, let us know.
So, uh, so then you, you make the case, it's right before you pay, right? Like if I'm mm -hmm. sending some cartons, it's right before you pay, you, mm -hmm. um, they ask you again, how many boxes you have and how many, and, and you get again, the opportunity to, to put that new information in there. Is that exactly okay exactly. nice because because let's say your product is 50 pieces in a case from china yeah right but i found out that amazon can allow up to 150 units in the case mm, uh -huh. so you use that 150 units in the case as a benchmark and divide it by your 750 units that you want to ship from china so you from the first page you're going to say you have five cases of 150 in a case right mm -hmm. and then when you get to the final stage you're going to change it back to 50 pieces in the case and you know uh 15 cases in cases okay. because at that time they would have told you where to ship it to yeah so that's that's how we we force them to uh, uh, to let us ship to fewer locations. Yeah, ninja hack guys, don't spread this around. Keep it on. The <laughs> yeah, if you get, let's keep it to ourselves. You know, let's see how long it takes before they plug that hole. I don't know how yeah. long. Yeah. But uh, it's all about finding loopholes before they close them. Yeah, yeah, that's why we you know that's where I really talked about this, but because of you know, we're talking about how to save. Yeah. Uh, we, is what we might as well just talk about it, okay? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Victor says cool hack. Thank you, Victor. Um, number 14, redesign your product to fit into a smaller packaging. Is your product squishy, made of fabric, foam, or can be rolled? You might as well squeeze it into a tight packaging. <laughs> I've seen a difference of four to seven dollars for a piece. Savings in FBA fees are seven thousand dollar profit on a thousand units sold. That's that's very close to what we just said about you know you know the the pack, the people that were shrink wrapping. So you you if you have to roll your product, if you have to suck hair out of it, if you have to wind it up tightly, whatever you can do to reduce your product into a smaller packaging, please do it. You know, it will save a lot of money at the very end. You're going to pick up a lot of, that's one of the ways you can compete uh, with your, uh, uh, with competitors or with factories, uh, you know, that are hitting into your, uh, into your margin. Okay. All right. We're going to go into questions real soon. The last one, reclassify your products to fall under a lower fee HTS code. If you go to, uh, at our past webinars, we talked about, you know, HTS code a lot, the tariff, Trump tariff was the title of that webinar. So if you can go to that series, you'll see how I talked about what the tariff is, how, it's, how it works and how to save. Uh, this could be your biggest money saver. What if you can legally find an HTS code that will reduce your tariff rate from 25% to 7%? It's amazing how much money you can cash in with just paying $197 to an expert to find you a better tariff code. So let's say your cost of goods is 30,000 in a year. And right now you're paying 25% in tariff because of the code you're using. So 25% of $30,000 is, you know, 10 or less than 10,000. Like, uh, what is that? My math is not, Whatever that cost is, maybe seven thousand or eight thousand or something. Uh, what if you know we help you reclassify your product legally because HCS code is based on the material you use or the application of your product. What if your product qualifies for both the material and is used? Maybe your product is a is a printed product and it is uh, both a journal and it's both a uh, uh, a picture book, you know, like a baby book. Let's say you, you, you're bringing in a baby book, a baby milestone book, and you have to put baby photo into it. And also you have to journal, oh, this is the first time my baby walked. This is the first time, you know, she says daddy or mommy or whatever, <laughs> you know. What if it's both a journal and a picture book? But the tariff 
for picture book is 25% and the tariff for journal is 7%. And there is no HCS code for both, tariff, uh, for both picture book and journal, right? That's the way to save. You save, you can easily reduce your tariff but from eight thousand dollars to as little as you know twenty one hundred dollars it's a huge savings so it's how you how you interpret your product so the best way is to really understand your product i hear norm say norman had the same uh experience uh he was selling soap and uh they were bringing it they were bringing his goods into the country under soap or natural soap until uh, he found out that, wait a minute, this is a Castile soap. And Castile soap is 0% tariff. So his tariff went from like 15% to 0% overnight, just by understanding more of your product and finding the right code that actually applies to that product. Okay, so that's uh, a really big one. Now let's do... Q and A. I know we might have a questions today. Let's you know open it up to questions. Yeah, as you guys can go ahead and type in the chat. Um, you can raise your hand and we can unmute you. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Any particular situations? I know that I am really looking forward to finding out how much uh, money that I can save. Like for example, our tariffs for our main seller went from zero to 24% uh, in a matter of less than a year. So repricing that is gonna be huge for us. No questions? Any questions at all? Well, that means I did good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Answered all the questions before they could be had. <laughs> Here's one. Okay, I would like all suppliers to give me FOB pricing, but they hope the price. I'm not sure. Alex, can you clarify that? That doesn't, I don't know if something was misspelled. I would like all suppliers to give me FOB price, but they, oh, suppliers increase the price when I ask for FOB. Well, did they give you X work before? Did they give you EXW? price before let's see alex did you have exw price before uh, he says they increase price much higher into each unit price because fob price is usually higher than ex work uh -huh. yeah. so ex work price is good price uh always stick to the ex work price don't do fob mm -hmm. Because, yeah. because uh, Alex, do you know the difference between the EX works and the FOB price? Oh, oh, but then you pay FOB to forwarder. Well, then you really have a forwarder problem, honestly, because the cost of the difference between X work and FOB price is the cost of picking up your product at the factory and moving it to the uh, to the uh, to the to the port. Yes, it has to get truck to pick up from the suppliers, yes. But that's not expensive. Sometimes trucking is like a hundred bucks to pick up from the suppliers. So they shouldn't be adding a pricing to every single unit. If they're using FOB, they're adding the pricing to every single unit is my understanding. And so the larger <laughs> your orders, the more you're gonna end up paying. Exactly. Um, for, you know, say you've got a trucking cost and they might charge you one simple fee for up to a certain amount of units but mm -hmm. you know the the smaller your orders the the more costly it it, it becomes per unit yep and why are they shipping from shanghai to shenzhen those are that's a far place why do you have to ship from shanghai to shenzhen alex is it to consolidate let me see what he says because I have most orders from Shanghai. 
<sighs> Shanghai is really far from Shenzhen. Um, um, are you shipping directly to FBA warehouse or you're going to uh, 3PL warehouse? Yeah, Shanghai is higher charge. Yep, I agree. I agree. So it sounds like he needs to get XWorks and then figure out how much it's going to cost. Okay, if so he, you know. Yeah, if you can find the price, the FOB price versus the XWorks price, and then get the price from the trucking company, then mm -hmm. you can see what is more cost effective. But you're saying that for the most part, XWorks and, and then separate trucking it fee is the better is better yeah. because the fob like you said they're, they're stacking up the, the the cost on top of his cost right so uh you know may take longer time than supplier shipping himself uh you you need a custom uh you need a custom uh logistics solution i need to know how many pieces you're shipping from Shenzhen to shanghai because if it's a lot why don't you ship out of Shanghai? Uh, why don't you ship out of Shenzhen by yourself and do L and do LCL directly? Uh, because I don't know the amount of savings you're going to save uh, by not doing that. Uh, let's see what it says. So you have shipment from all over China. So they are consolidating in uh, Shanghai for you. Uh, for order is in Shenzhen. Uh, and uh, how to consolidate in different ports. Uh, then you're using a forwarder that only has a presence in Shenzhen. Uh, you might have, you might want to use forwarders that have offices and with locations in different parts of China, Alex. Because if you have forwarders that have offices and operations in different parts of China, they will be able to consolidate in different regions. You don't have to be moving goods from one region to the other. It, I mean, because once you start moving goods from Shanghai to Shenzhen, your goods are not insured. If something happens to that truck that is moving it from one part to another part, they're not liable. They're not liable. So I will advise that you use a a forwarder that has different locations, I mean, different operations in different parts of China, they will be able to help you consolidate instead of moving it all over the country. Would you agree with that, Alex? Awesome, okay, awesome, awesome. All right, if you need help with that, you know, you will see my email at the end. You can shoot me an email. Uh, to see if I can, if I, if there's anything I can do to help, because if I understand your volume, that you're moving from different parts of China, we might be able to design something simple, whereby you know your goods will come, will live on different parts of China into a central location in LA. If your warehouse is in, if your warehouse is close to LA, maybe we'll ship from different parts of China and bring it to LA and then consolidate in LA and ship it to your warehouse. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I see another question. Then Monthly I, volume may not be too much. 200 CBM per month. That's still not bad. That's still not bad. Uh, 200 CBM a month is about, uh, could be that, that could be 10 containers actually. So that's sizable. That's sizable, Alex. I think that's good enough volume to get some savings. If it is 200, unless you wanted to type 20. <laughs> or you use the 45 HQ. It looks like he uses a 45 HQ to bring them here. Uh, okay. All right. Cool. 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 Yeah. I'm just concerned with you moving goods all over China, honestly. Uh, there's too much uh, risk, there's too much hazard, moving things like that all over. You know, uh, God forbid you, something goes wrong with your truck. Uh, 
yeah, change to X work if possible. Mm. Once you once you calculate your, the, the the thing, change you, X work is still way better. I don't think it's worth it if you're moving this kind of volume to to be doing FOB. You will save a lot of money if you do X work. Let's see. Yeah, it says thank you. Oh, we'll change to X work. Don't see any other questions coming up. And that means I did very well. Yes. Oh, here's <laughs> one. When dealing with thousands of product, does the hack of changing the amount per box still make a big difference? Well, when you have uh, a thousand what? A thousand SKUs? Like thousands, when you have thousands, you're sending thousands of units in at the same time. Like your example was sending in 750 and it goes down to five boxes. If you, you know, say for example, I think what he's saying is, you know, if you're sending in 5,000 units of a product and you have to divide it by 150, you're still sending in 33 units or 33 boxes. Does the hack of putting it at 150 still work in that case, or are you still Yes, people? yes, mm -hmm. it does work too. So, you, I mean, the, the best way to do is just to give it a shot. <laughs> Go to your seller center and, you know, pretend like you want to create shipments and use the 150 unit act that I showed you and use the usual, uh, I mean, and use your usual box and see the difference in how they're going to push your, uh, push your goods to different warehouses. Give it a shot, try it out. Yeah, maybe you'll let us know. <laughs> <laughs> but it works because I use it on thousands and thousands of quantities, so it, it does work. Uh-huh, awesome. If not, if not, another thing you could do is to, if you wanna ship 10,000 units and you try it and they spread it all over, maybe you reduce, maybe you do it in chunks of 1,000 or chunks of 2,000. That way, you have multiple shipments created, but at least you will still force them to put it in fewer warehouses. You can do that too. Because we, we do that on, on hair cargo too, whereby we have multiple shipments in one, under one hairway bill, and it does work. Cool. Oh, Alex puts another question here. Can you tell please your experience with paying for goods after they arrive to USA port? How well it works and how supplier willing to do it? Well, uh, what they do, if, they, if, you have a, if you have a payment terms to pay the balance of your goods when they arrive in the US, what your supplier does is he holds, he holds on to your bill of lading. Mm -hmm. So if you don't pay him, you wouldn't release the bill of lading. And if he, does, if he doesn't release the bill of lading, then your goods will go into demerage. And if you go into demerage, you're going to be paying between 100 to $400 a day. Mm. What does the, the word demerage mean? Demerage just means uh, a goods that have not been claimed that is sitting in the yard, sitting in the shipping yard. Mm -hmm. okay. So they're going, to, they're going to charge like you're they're charging you for overstaying. Yeah. At, a, at a hotel. <laughs> uh -huh. wow. yeah. uh, how suppliers willing to do it? Are they okay with this offer? Have you tried it? Yes, they're willing to do it. Yes. Most suppliers will do it for you, especially if you have a good relationship with them because you have a lot to lose more than them. Well, both of you have a lot to lose because if you, if you don't pay them, they don't release your bill of lading. And if they don't release your bill of lading, you don't take your products and then they'll be forced to sell it on open market. They'll sell the goods to your competitors on open market. Mm -hmm. So many suppliers are willing to do it, uh, Alex. Just talk to them, tell them, hey, I'll pay you when the goods arrive in the US. Uh, and, and you know, they should be able to do it if you have good relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can also explain, you know, if it helps your cash flow, then you're able to you know, mm -hmm. launch more products more often. And that could mean additionally sourcing from them new products. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, our supplier does that. Mm -hmm. most, most suppliers would do that, especially if, uh, if you're in good rapport with them. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll take care of that for you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. It looks like we're um, 
out of questions for now, we wanted to kind of talk about the, the special thing that you're, you're offering, special sweetheart deal, shall we call it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop sharing. Yeah. So where's your video? I guess I can put up my, my share. We can kind of talk about um, working with Afu Lobby. We're currently working with Afu Lobby personally. And I wanted, to, I talked to him and he wants to provide you a special, like a special deal. So if you're looking at uh, restructuring your supply chain, it's one of the things that we're doing, restructuring our supply chain. Uh, essentially what Afu Lobby does in, in his service called the Profit Finder is looks at your sourcing, you know, looks at all of your purchase orders, looks at your shipping invoices, and figures out where you're losing money. So he'll be able to see which products need to uh, be resourced, what uh, fees are you're, you're being overcharged for your shipping, and basically go through kind of your whole system to, you know, figure out, it's like a business audit. I consider it similar to, you know, the difference between having you know, filing your taxes on TurboTax and getting a professional tax accountant to do your taxes. It's like, um, kind of like that. When we did our sourcing and we set up our, our systems, we were basically were TurboTaxing it. We did a course and we went through Alibaba and we got a trading company and we're paying trading company, you know, fees. We're paying, I call it the, um, you don't, you're not so, so mean as me. I call it the stupid tax. You call it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's the, you know, it's, if you've been doing that and we've been doing that same, you know, we've been using that same supplier. We've been doing it for the last five years. If you've been, if you're kind of questioning whether your sourcing tactics were, you know, smart, or if you think that your shipping companies gouging you, He'll go through, he goes through with the profit finder, goes through it and finds all of these places where you're basically hemorrhaging money throughout your supply chain. Um, and so that's what he's offering. It's called the profit finder. He offers it uh, at a specific price, but uh, he contacted me and said that he wanted to offer it at, at a discount. And um, so he says he typically, typically finds up to 10% um, in most businesses. And so one, one of the things we did is as part of that throwing in three free months of, of so stocked. So what that means is, you know, if you have so stocked already, we'll give you a three month credit. If you don't have it, then you'll be able to use it for three months before, you know, um, before paying the lifetime price of, you know, $59. And we're about to raise the price probably by the end of the month, we'll be raising the price and then raising the price again. Uh, so you would be locked into that price as well. Um, but let me see. Oh, here we go. So yeah. So if you're over, you might be overpaying your supplier. If you, you know, you, like I said, like we did got your, your supplier on Alibaba or a similar sourcing website. If you speak to your supplier using a language other than Chinese, if you pay your supplier using anything other than the Chinese currency, these are all kind of big red flags for suppliers to know that they can charge you the stupid tax, that they can, you know, charge you with the American price versus the local Chinese price. Uh, so those are some of the things that he is able to do is to find, you know, a way around and get to actually the suppliers that will charge you what you should actually be paying. And then for freight forward, if you got a quote from an online shipping platform, right, you were saying Flexport, you know, that type of those types of companies, if you didn't get multiple quotes, or if you didn't negotiate your shipping rates, he can look in and see, you know, for example, what is this $1,000 charge? What are these extra charges? He knows the charge is kind of like reading a contract, an attorney can read a contract and let you know that that specific tiny line of, of text, that phrase in the contract is something that's going to screw you over. That's kind of what he's able to do with the uh, the shipping invoices is look at that and go, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. And you just kind of, you know, like I do shrug my shoulders and go, well, that's how much it costs. He's like, nope, that's not how much it costs. So that's what he does with this, uh, profit finder. 
you can find you can find it at sostocks.com forward slash savings dash finder and I'll post in the the link. It's going to be available for 48 hours. So you have 48 hours to decide if that's something that you want to do, you know, um, no pressure or anything, but he does off, offer it at $9.95 on his website and he's going to be offering it for $6.95 uh, for the next 48 hours. And again, we're throwing so stock in for three months free as part of that. So let me give you the, the link in case you're interested in in that we are personally going through the process of having him completely audit our entire supply chain right now. So um, we can't wait to like share with you guys what we're able to, what we're able to get. I'm looking forward to that. Here we go. Um, boom. And then the other thing, the other part of it that was really uh, surprising that I had to double check with him on is he says that savings is guaranteed or you get your money back. So what that means is, you know, I asked him, I said, <laughs> I was like, you, you really want to give a money back guarantee? He's like, you know, he's seen so many, pro, uh, so many people come through and so many sellers. He's looked at so many systems and it's so uncommon for sellers in the e-com space to have their stuff together to actually, that he actually, you know, finds these savings that he can actually offer this free guarantee, you know. Um, oh, we have a question. So $6.95 is for all products, some some restrictions. Did you want to kind of clarify what this all covers, Alpha Lobby? Uh, we, what we look at is your invoices. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have 10 products, doesn't matter. Just send me your invoices for products and shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, and the warehousing or whatever you do, we'll take a look at it. It's a rigorous exercise. <laughs> you know, I have my whole team look at it. We're looking at all, each line of your invoice to see what it is. And we're also looking into, uh, we also look at your product and see, hmm, that product is $6.50 from China. Are you sure? That, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, one of my sourcing specialists would be like, let me see how much we can get it for. Mm -hmm. you know, so sometimes we'll go into the market and just, give you a soft price and say, uh -huh. well, you know, we should be able to get you these for a little less than what you're getting uh, for. So those are the things we will do. We'll look at your product invoices. We'll look at your shipping. We'll look at your, how you even ship your product. You know, like Alex was saying, you, you, it ships from Shenzhen to Shanghai. We'll be like, mm, let's see if we can do this better. Let's see how much I use paying for the trucking and how much are you paying to get to your warehouse will break down your whole supply chain. Yeah. Break it down into pieces and will help you reassemble it again. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that's what is so interesting to me. That's what I like about, you know, the way that you do things. It's something that we should be taking the time to learn and to figure out and something that most sourcing and logistics companies don't do is this comprehensive audit of your entire logistics uh, system. Because, you know, you usually have them piecemeal. You have a freight forwarder and you have a supplier and you have them all piecemeal and they're kind of lazy. They just want to collect your money and they just want to do it the easy way. They don't want to take the time to actually look at the best way. So I think that's why, you know, like Norm, when he introduced us, he was like, he's doing things that other people aren't doing. That's the difference. It's like actually taking the time to figure out the best way to do things, not the way that, you know, this is the way we do things because this is the way that, you know, I was taught to do things or I know how to source by ocean and that's what I do. You know, if, if you, if you uh, are a hammer, everything's a nail, you know, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're like a Swiss army knife. Like you have the ability to kind of look at the best way to do that. It's kind of a, a different way to go than just working with a freight forwarder or working with a supplier. That, that's my, my, my opinion anyway. Is how I kind of see it. So anyway, yeah, it's, I think it's a, an awesome service. Um, so hopefully that answers it. Hopefully that answered Alex's question. Let's go back. Let me see. I can't see where my, um, yeah, let's see. Here's the chat. Okay. Um, maybe 10 products max. Um, okay, cool. 
So, and then if they had more products, that would be something that you could probably have a conversation with them about in the process. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. That's great. Um, if anyone, if no one else has, has any questions, um, I'll send out this link via the email so that you guys have it as well. And again, it's 48 hours and then this, the uh, page is going to kind of be taken down. Um, so we do have more webinars in, in planning. We have an upcoming web webinar. I think this is about a month from now in July. Uh, the Chinese trademarks webinar, why they could be vital to protecting your business. So Alpha Lobby is going to talk about Chinese trademarks. I know if you don't have a tr Chinese trademark right now, you probably have been hearing why it might be important to get a Chinese trademark. And um, he can explain what exactly is going on and what, uh, why you might need it and how to go about that process. Is that as easy as going to the USPTO.gov. Um, the short answer is it's not, <laughs> unless you speak Chinese, <laughs> I'm sure. But um, so he's going to kind of give us some data on that. And then um, I have a webinar on June 18th, which is the Amazon, uh, Pro Amazon Inventory Secrets to Increase Your Bottom Line, where I talk about using inventory tactics and inventory planning to be able to kind of smooth out your cash flow and to stop stocking out or over ordering and, and crippling, you know, your ability to scale. And uh, that's again on June 18th. The, the links are uh, sostock.com forward slash seller dash secrets for the Chinese trademarks one. And then sostock.com forward slash inventory dash secrets for the uh, inventory planning webinar that I have. Anyway, let me see. It looks like there might be one more comment. Um, good to meet you, Afalabi. Thank you for the talk. Awesome. Okay, great. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Alex. Um, if you have any other questions, um, you know, feel free to, to send us an email. We will be sending out this uh, webinar. And just so that you guys know, if you go to So Stocked uh, or YouTube and type in So Stocked in the search, one word, so stocked as one word, you'll be able to find our YouTube channel and we have a special playlist of these specific webinars with Off the Lobby. So it's the sor uh, sourcing or seller secrets webinars or sourcing secrets maybe, um, but it's a special playlist and all the webinars that we've done with Off the Lobby go there. We'll send this out again, but you can also go and catch them on our, our YouTube and feel free to subscribe and follow us on YouTube as well as we, uh, release these things. Okay, Apple Lobby, thank you so much for, for doing this again. Um, thank you. I had a good time. Thanks for all the questions and everything. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, everyone. Alex, Kyle, you know, it was nice meeting everyone. Yes, awesome. And we will get his uh, contact information out along with uh, the link to the video. Awesome. The replay. Awesome. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Bye, thanks, Bye Chelsea. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right, bye.